Hi everyone and welcome to uh, this online session. My name is Stuart Beckett and I will be taking you through the steps of this watercolour painting today. Uh, we're going to do a alpine house and it is going to be step by step so if you want to paint along then please do get your brushes out and join in. My blue colour which is my first colour and I'm going to start at the very top up here. So I'm loading my brush up really lots of paint, okay? So it's really nice and wet. And here we go. So hold your breath, or don't hold your breath. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to start to wiggle this on. Give it a little bit of angle. So loading up nicely so that we don't get any dry bits. Now when I get to this tree over here, I'm just going to wiggle it in because I'm going to bring some greens into that in a bit. So I'm not too worried about it being um an actual tree shape i just want to break through there and i'm going to put some greens in there and stuff to kind of go along so coming across now i want it slightly lighter at the bottom so i'm putting a little bit more water in the wash now so i'm i'm, I'm washing it out a little bit not too much just a little bit and you'll notice now we're coming down to where we were with that exercise where we're cutting around the house now so I'm cutting around the apex, across the top of the chimney, down in between the two little chimneys, out towards the right. But what you must make sure is look, every single part of my wash at the moment has got a bead. Yeah, bead, 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 bead. Up here it's not beaded, but I'm gonna drop some greens in there in a minute if I stop talking long enough. And then um, hopefully it won't dry out. So there we go. So we're into the roof line there. And now I can bring this down on the right hand side, more water. So I want to wash this out now. So plenty of water just to get it to wash out. Down around my trees, down, down, down and job done. Okay, so that's the green, that's the blue done. I'm going to lift this bit out because I don't want a big puddle there. I'm just using, I'm just knocking the um, paint out onto some tissue if you if you manage it and then I'm just lifting that bit out and that bit out and that bit out okay so I don't have big puddles all right now into my greens um, I'm just sorry I'm just mixing up a little bit more of that because I've got quite enough oh just picked up something dirty there what was that that's live tv for you let me do that again Sorry, I picked up a bit of purple on the brush and it made it go really mucky and dirty, so I want to change that. I'm just mixing up that green again. So just the ultramarine and the um, transparent yellow. I really shouldn't be doing this because we should have everything prepared, but hey-ho, live TV and all that. Okay, so now into my tree up here, look, and I want this to be a wet in wet look. So I'm trying to bump this green right into that um, edge of the blue wash that we just put on so we don't end up with a, um, a very solid shape and it will bleed okay it's going to bleed into the blue but that's fine coming round my apex there so I've actually lost a bit of sky there but never mind I'm making that tree coming down the back of the actually we'll bring that over the roof line a little bit <clears throat> Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. So squiggle the brush. The more you wiggle the brush, the more you get happy accidents with the little white spots. You know, the little holes that get left. So that's what makes the watercolor a little bit more interesting to look at. Okay, so coming down to about here. Now let's um, go slightly, I'm gonna go slightly darker, so a bit more intense with that color bit more yellow, a little bit more of the blue. So I'm just thickening the colour up a little bit more. I'm not, I'm not changing the colour, I'm just making it go a bit more intense. So coming across, oh, that's a bit of a big bead there, I don't want it too big. Wiggle it through the blue. Coming down. Now as you come down to the um, the bottom of the tree, I'm using sort of a, a chopping kind of motion to 
leave some little bits of white that we can paint back into at the end. All right, so little bits of, I don't know, detail, not detail, but um, foliage just to break this edge up. Coming down the side of the um, tree there. Now, what I want to do now is I'm going to dip more into the transparent yellow. So lots and lots of yellow now into that same green wash that's pretty much just yellow with a little bit of whatever green was left over in there. Okay, so it's a lot more yellowy. And then I'm going to be using that to break into all of this as a first wash. Coming down the front of the building and making sure I keep a nice, so you see how I'm kind of pushing up the, the, the tip of the brush to try and make some grasses or um, little bits of, I don't know, whatever, plants coming down there. I'm gonna angle the wash as well slightly to give an impression of it coming down the hill. So rather than wash it horizontally, I'm putting the wash down at a slight angle, okay, which is encourages the feeling of um, a hill. So there we go, coming across. Now I'm gonna take some water now and I wanna wash this out because I want it to go lighter. So this is just water I'm adding now. It's getting lighter and lighter and lighter on this right hand side. Plenty of water. I've got some little rocks at the bottom here. Just going around those, around my little rocks, lots of water, lots of water, wash, wash, wash. Okay, now once that wash is all on, I need to have a look to see if I'm happy with it. Actually, I want to lose that little bit there, so I'm just adding a bit more water in. I'll wash some of that out so I don't have a line. I might wash out a little bit through here as well. So this is just using cleanish water because I don't mind a few cauliflowers in this sort of area because it's foliage. So it's, it, it doesn't really matter if you get the odd cauliflower in there. Um, equally in my tree at the top there, I'm now, look, I'm, I'm wiping out all the moisture from my brush and I might just do a little bit of lifting out just a little bit not much and i'm rolling the brush over the wash just to take out some of the um some of the color just to get a bit of variation there we go so a little bit there we'll have a little bit of lifting out through here the easels bouncing all over the place sorry about that a little bit there and there, okay, we'll lose that little spot, that spot. Okay, so that is pretty much uh, anything you would you would regard as shadow. Okay, so I'm starting to cut in on this apex, looking at the shapes that the shadows are making. It kind of comes across here and then it sort of meets the other apex there, it goes all the way underneath underneath there and I put a little bit more blue in that it's a little bit too gray I think touch more blue so we're coming all the way through there we've got some little windows a little trick with the windows I don't know if any of you know this but um because they tend to be receded I further into the structure than um, the surface around it. If you do a little bit of a down angle at where the window is, I'll show you a bit better when we do the side windows, but um, it tends to um, just say window without actually having to paint window. Um, right, so we've got more shadow on this side. So we can pop some of that in. 
Is everybody okay? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. Just shout if you want me to stop. Um, I'm just intending to get this first wash on and then I'll dry it off. Um, and then I'll let you all catch up if you are struggling to keep up. Um, so we've got some banisters in here. So I'm just going to almost paint a negative. So leave a gap just to sort of indicate that there's something else going on there. So it's just to suggest that it's um, got something going on there. Stuart, what, what colours did you use for the grey? So the grey, I just used the ultramarine. Yeah. And some burnt umber. Oh, right. Thank you. Okay, so just a brown, any old, or you could use burnt sienna if you wanted to, which would make it a warmer, a warmer grey. Okay, thank you. All right. So this whole section now here is all going to be just one big wash. Okay, under the roof. Oops. Because it's, we're still quite in light colours here, so um, I'm leaving myself plenty of room to be able to go darker. Thing. You know, we thought it was a writing accident, now we think it's a quad yeah. Okay, so um, you know, all of this can go darker still, so there's no there's no reason to try and start to paint the individual uh, elements too early. And that's the problem. A lot of people, when they start to use watercolor, they, everything gets broken up too quickly. Um, and really, you need to unify as much as possible. I've just got a couple of little figures here. I'm just going around their heads. Um, I made those up, by the way. They're not actually in the reference. And all the way across. So I'll do that all the way across. Um, quite a good idea to do that now rather than later, because then it'll be the same tone and the same colour as the wash you've just put on. Otherwise, if you leave it till later, you might end up making it too dark or oh, I've actually got some spots in there, where they come from. But the most important thing about this banister is that you don't connect these little dots with this wash that's above it. You must leave a gap all the way to the lower than the window, just to suggest that there's some variation in the um, the depth of the walls. There we go. Uh, and then over here, it kind of goes around the corner. And then we've just got some little, and this is what I was talking about with the windows, is if you just go at a back angle, just to suggest the, the shadow is going into the window. Just a good suggestion. Um, and then there's a little bit of something, I don't even know what that is, I think it's like a, a bit of um, decking or something sticking out the front there. Okay, and that's wash one. Okay, so here we go then, starting, starting at the top up here, so I'm going to cut in this apex, and because this is a light colour, or a very light colour, um, I don't really need to worry too much about the edge because it's when it goes over the darker colour, it'll just disappear into the dark. Let's just wipe those back a bit. And also the darker colours we're going to bring on top anyway. And I'm trying to follow the, um, the angle of the roof as best I can. So... I'm going to put a bit more water in that because I think that's a little bit too, still a little bit too dark. So I'm going to wash it out a touch at the bottom. Just putting clean water in. So there we go. Just wash it out there a little bit. Bring that through into here, through the front, into the building up there. a bit more. All of this left hand side will coat that. There we go. And then there is actually an orangey roof back here which I may put in later. We've got some of this colour on this side. 
pop that in. Coming up to the apex. So, a little bit more water in there. Goes all the way across the front of the, um, the roof line. Coming down. There we go. All the way through the side of the building. I'm going to pop that through there. And then we've got some, I think they're hanging baskets or something at the front there. There's a bit of greenery down in there. A little bit of blue there. Okay, so that's my blues. Just lift out any um, pooling areas. That's probably pretty light. You might not even be able to see that on the on the um, on the screen, but it's very very light. But now I'm going to put in um, some slightly stronger orangey colours to break up this tree and also this tree over here because there's, there's actually some buildings in the distance but I'm not going to paint buildings I'm just going to put some colour just to break it up a little bit. So I'm going to use brown and um, uh, I don't know just some shapes that indicate perhaps some buildings or something sitting behind all this foliage. I'm not really making it a particular building just dark. Uh, so I can come sort of there on the left hand side. Now at the bottom of that I want to go darker again so I'm going to put, um, let's see, let's go more purpley again with the brown, same brown. I'm just making it a bit more purple which will darken it up slightly more. So again a bit more paint. And I might even put a little bit of blue in that as well, so it's slightly less colourful. Don't need to be too, too in your face. Just want a nice dark, there we go. So then I'm going to bring some nice darks in down here. So with these darks, um, and this is something I found just obviously with watercolour and playing around with it, is that if you put these on after too many layers they get very dead um they lose a lot of their um interest because they're over too many washes mm. so sometimes better to actually start to get these on earlier rather than later but you have to be confident to do that <laughs> so you need to make sure that when you're putting them on they're in the right place otherwise you'll end up having your your darker marks all wrong. Okay, so a little bit of that dark wiggling its way, maybe make those into sort of tree stumps. In there. And then we're getting into the side of the building here, so I'm just going to cut in around that edge there. Bring a little bit of this dark down. So I'm going to leave a gap. And then bring a little bit of this dark to indicate some slightly darker bits just on the edge of the grass there. Now I'm going to mix up a darker green now. I'm going to use the same constituent colours which will be the blue and the transparent yellow. But into that I'm going to put some more, um, slightly more blue, so it's a bit darker, and a teeny touch of red, okay, because I want it to be a little bit less, a um, little bit less yellowy and slightly more shadowy type colour. I'm also going to use a, um, a rigger now. So I'm dropping to a rigger brush as well as my bigger brush. So I've got the two brushes now, okay? So this tree here has got quite a lot of foliage in the middle. So I'm going to start to wiggle 
this color. And because I'm using the rigger, I can actually start now to maybe indicate some um, like branches or uh, twigs and that kind of thing. And then I can use the other brush to sort of bed that in. So let's bring that shadow down, make that into a, a branch. That's another one there. Give it some leaves. It's sort of overhanging the building a little bit there. So we'll continue this shadow down into the and I'm purposely trying to leave some of the initial green wash showing through so we don't lose all of that because we need that to give us our first tone of the, um, the green. So let's just link that into there, the top here. Right. Give this some foliage. Lovely watching. Mm. <laughs> there we go. So a bit more coming up into the top of the tree. And then wiggle some more little twigs and I don't know, wiggly bits, wiggly squiggly bits. Break that. So this tree kind of comes up here somewhere. Just give him some foliage, okay. And a bit of blue. So, um, put a little bit of ochre in that, just to warm it up a touch. <coughs> Make it a bit brighter. Oh, those are nice. It's sort of a light brown, okay. So with this, I'm going to start to detail up um, some of the woodwork in, in the front of the, um, the, uh, the back tree. So unlike um, this, where I was painting in between the brick, uh, the, um, the struts, I'm now going to be painting the, the actual struts themselves, if you, if you see what I mean. So coming across. So again, now and again, make a slightly taller one because that will be the the main upright. And then we've got one, so we kind of come to the corner here. And then with my brush, instead of trying to draw a line this way, I'm just actually going to put my brush on the side to this rigger and then just press, just to get a very fine line. Okay. And then I'm going to do the same with with coming across here just to give me a line because if you go if you try and draw a line like that it's sometimes quite difficult to get it um, as you want it <clears throat> so let's bring a bit of this through into here okay and then we'll have some more uprights kind of there and there Filling in some of those spaces. Going to continue this across, just using the same little trick. So I'm not um, going to paint a line there. I'm just going to use the side of the brush the whole way. Oops, my balcony is a bit wonky, but never mind. There we go, all the way to the end. Going to start to use that to pop some colour into these uprights. A little bit strong, kind of a bit lighter. So, with these uprights, what I'm going to try and do is um, leave some of the greys going through because then that will be the the kind of the shadow colour showing from behind. So rather than paint little bits in those areas and leave leave those as the underpainting. 
There we go. So start to get these little bits in. There's actually a bit of that brown that kind of links these together. Get some of that in. <clears throat> pull that down, pull that down, upright. So this is quite a good little exercise in controlling the paintbrush. Mm -hmm. um, trying to keep the brush steady. So we need to make sure if our balcony here is this deep, as we come up the building this way, we need to be getting more and more, kind of more and more steep, okay? So this needs to come sort of back this way. Coming down the building. We've also got, I don't know, little bottoms to this, whatever they are. I think they're kind of pots or hanging baskets. Then I'm going to go back to my original grey colour because actually I didn't paint this in earlier, so I need to get this in now. So these apexes come up. Oops, that's a bit dark. Come down there and then we've got a little bit of light and then we're coming down again so this is kind of the um inside lip of the far apex mm -hmm. and then we've got the window which sits with inside that so i'm going to blow it up a little bit and then the window comes at an angle okay just inside that area. And then I repeat the same process over here. So we've got a little a little gap. Okay, as it comes across, we've got the inside lip of this very tall, which is quite unusual really, the, the tall apex on the far away gable end, or what you call it. That comes down and then it links in with the um, the shadow under that piece there all the way down and then I blew it up a little bit and then we come underneath into the window shadow I think there's two windows on this one so I'm going to put a second one in so if you notice the light is coming um, uh, from above quite high up so all of this is casting shadows underneath so that's why this window shadow is at an angle so you see if I do a backwards angle like that leave a little gap it gives the impression that there's a there's a window there okay like a little like a little triangle and then I'm going to go back to my greens again because in here we've got some, some greeny colours. Green. So maybe a little bit more yellow in that. There's some more yellows. So these are like hanging type basket things. So we'll pop those in. And they come all the way down. Actually, let's make that a bit bigger. Then we've got some distant trees. So let's get those in. So these back here are all trees, I think. They're kind of, I don't know whether they're poplars or whatever they are, but they're quite nice shapes to have to uh, help show up some of the architecture of the building. So let's get those in. Coming down. And down. And into the That's distance. Okay. Oh. Oh. There we go. So that's some of the front of the building in. So while we're waiting for that to dry, I'm going to go back now to start to pop in some more tone within these areas to make it a bit stronger. And now I'm going to take my original shadow colour, which was the, um, the blue and the brown. 
So a little bit more of the blue and the brown together, but this time more intense, okay? So it's less, less watery, which will give me the intensity that I need. So there we go. So it's a bit darker. And I'm gonna start off on this left-hand gable um, because this one's a lot darker than, so the inside edge needs to come a lot, lot darker. They're coming all the way down. Oops. And then that goes out. And then we can come right up to the top there. And then my shadow is going to go a bit bluer. And I'm going to bring that all the way down. So this is where you've got to be brave and just get those dark colours on. No being timid at this point. There's no point of no return now. <laughs> so we've got an even darker window in there actually, so I'll pop that in. Yeah. Coming all the way down. And then that comes across there. <clears throat> Uh, we've got a little bit of a darker tone just underneath there. These windows are darker. Now what I'm trying to do, I don't know if you can see it, but um, the underwash, I'm still leaving some of that showing. So I'm not trying to cover all that up. I'm purposely trying to leave some of that visible. And what that basically does is it gives me my little half tone between the two colors. So in, in the thicker mediums, or I'm always talking about half tone and all of that stuff. Um, in watercolors, it's very difficult to come back and then pop in a half tone. Mm. Um, so if you leave some of the underwash showing through, that can then play the part of that little half tone, okay, between the wash, the darker wash you put on top, and the um, and the wash underneath. So let's just lose some of these little bits there. There's some things going on over here. Some little bits of detail. I think they, I don't know what they are. Bits of tree or whatever. Oh, trees, yeah. Um, now I'm going to go back to my browns because I don't want it to be all blue. So I'm going to just pop some warmer colours in, in that wash. So just to break, to break this wash up a little bit, I'm just popping in some, some slightly brownier colours. Add some variation to it. I'm going to pop some of that over here. <laughs> Going that well, is it? <laughs> Just lift out a little bit in there and there. A little bit in there. Knock them down a touch. Now I need a... Um, so I'm going to get some rusty colours now. So I'm going to put a bit more orange in the brown. I feel like we've got a lot of blue and I need a bit of orange. So I'm going to use this orangey colour. It's kind of an orangey brown, fairly orange, to just um, help the drawing a little bit by showing up the top of the roof line with some broken marks, which will also maybe show it as being rust or um, something of that nature. So coming down, down there, the board wobbling a little bit. So this is just trying to show up the outside edge of the um, of the eve. Right, I'm going to use a little bit more of that. 
and pop it in here because this should actually be a roof an orangey roof back here so i'm just going to pop some of this orange in which will help break up some of the monotony of the blues and green Okay, we'll have a little bit more of that. I don't know, some little bits of orange over here. I'm not even really sure what these are, they're just shapes. To add a bit of variation. A bit of that down here. Okay, while I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm gonna get my rocks in. So I'm gonna make a um, a very light sandy colour, so I'm going to use like a yellow ochre with a teeny bit of blue in it again, just to make it slightly greyer. Okay. So I've got a few rocks down here in the in the foreground, so I'm just going to pop them in. And then I'll come back afterwards once they're dry and put a slightly darker piece of tone on those. Then we're going to have some more grasses. So back to my greens. They're going to go into, but this area is wet on the bottom. Mm. So then I take my colour, which is a bit stronger. And then out of the top of that, I start to wiggle the brush. So that the bottom stays nice and soft, but the top um, has some mark making in it. So it becomes more grassy, like. <laughs> Does that make sense to everyone? Yeah. Kind of. So give it a bit of angle. Get some grass in there. Bit of grass perhaps coming the other way. Quite long grass is the ones in the picture. And I'm going to continue this. Oops, just picked up some of that brown, but never mind. I'm going to continue this down here a little way. I might just give the bottom of this a little, just a little spray. Just to vary it. Okay, and then more greens or darker greens. So I'm going to actually go a little bit darker still in my greens, coming in from this side. Because what these greens will do, if you do go a little bit darker with them, is they'll push, they'll make the house look brighter, and they'll also um, push it back a bit. So now I'm just using the the side of the brush just to um, give some different marks. We'll have a few grassy bits around these rocks. To link that together a bit. Time now to get the darker elements in uh, the porch here. So I've mixed up a, a darker purpley grey type colour and I'm just about to bring that into the, some of these little shapes. Going to leave a few lighter, a few lighter spots. Um, along the banister just to break it up a little bit but um, and possibly a few little lighter spots in you know the underwash showing through if I use these little dark bits to show the detail on the woodwork 
we'll get these shapes in along there a little bit more there and there I'm going to go slightly redder now it's quite a dark reddy reddy blue colour and I'll pop these ones in here now Get this nice and dark along the veranda. A little bit of detail either side there. Might even put a touch of this into this area. Darken the window up. And the window on this side as well. Make it a bit darker. We've got a darker window up in the shadow there to go in. Continue along the banister. Might leave it a little bit lighter there just to give the indication of some little bits of detail and darken up some of these under railing bits otherwise the the um, the darkness from above won't replicate through. Make that a bit darker. And again, just get this one in. <clears throat> Gonna change it up again, a bit bluer again. Bluey purple. Quite, quite blue this one, it's darker, pop a little bit of that over here as well, just to darken that up a touch more, without trying to remember to put my little, little um, bits of detail in the woodwork. Darken up all these bits on the cap of the roof. A little bit in the gutter. Comes down. And darken up to increase the shadow content <coughs> through here. Make these windows a bit darker. Perhaps a bit darker back here. Darken up my windows. Just down there. Okay, now the underside of the main banister is going to go a little bit more orangey in my darks. To get the shadow of the underside a little bit stronger coming along along here all the way to the end of the the um, veranda then this is going to come down leaving a few little holes for the grasses that will be poking their way up so I'm negatively leaving some of those spaces and then we've got a kind of a window here. <coughs> a little bit of a wall there, comes down a little bit lower. Perhaps there's a doorway there. Comes a bit lower. Up a little bit higher. Then we're into the window again here. There's a nice big window there, kind of comes over and then down. Just put the frame in, a little bit of the frame there and there. 
And then we've got another bit of wall there. Another frame edge there. Comes across, down. Perhaps a little bit more tame in the window here. Down. And then we have a bottom edge the window. It's there and there. Then we've got some grey, very, very light greys just to go in here. Put more water into the wash, into my original grey, which is the blue ultramarine and the uh, burnt umber to give me the sort of Payne's grey type colour. I'll leave some little bits of white paper just to keep it a bit interesting don't want to lose all those whites because that's what gives it the brightness and there we go a little bit more perhaps in the grasses there and then we've got I don't know, another little veranda thing here, so we'll just put some greys on that. Some windows back here. On the end of the building. I'll have some more little grey bits just up there. Just to lose some of those whites. Perhaps a tiny bit more grey in this window. to make it a bit darker. Don't want it quite so bright as it is. Just darken that up a bit. Now I'm going to take some of those same greys with a little bit more orange in it. So it's an orangey grey now. I'm going to put some of these slightly rusty bits up here and before they dry I just want to give them a quick very light quick squirt with the um, spray just so it's nice and loose and it's not too solid and that comes all the way back here Okay. Have some of that. Might just wet it with a brush. Just a clean brush. Put a little bit of water on the roof line. Just drop some of those rustier colours just on the edge there. Break up the roof tone a bit. knock that bleed down a teeny bit there. <clears throat> so now I feel like we need a few stronger bits of colour. So in the foreground I'm going to go back into my rocks and darken those up. So I'm just taking my same shadow colour that I had in here and I'm going to pop some of that on these little rocks that we've got just to give a bit more tone to these a bit more shape remembering that the sun is coming from this side so we'll make sure the shadow is on that side of the of the of the rock Otherwise it won't read right. A few little bits there and there. Now I need to go and get some stronger colour now. So dipping into some neat orange. And some yellow ochre. So yellow ochre and neat orange. 
with a little bit of that original brown because it was in a dirty part of the tray. And then same little trick we did earlier. So I want a softer orangey kind of bit of grass through this area. So I'm going to take some water, clean water, just drop that in the area that I want my grasses to come. Sort of through through that area. And then with a a nice pointy brush. So this is the sort of colour. A bit more of a pointy brush. I'm going to go to my rigger. A nice pointy brush. I'm then going to start to bring some of these orangier colours in to that wet area that I've just put on the ground to start to break up this forefront area get it a bit more um, a bit more colourful really so a few of these here and there like so and now the bottom edge of that I just take my brush and then I break through it just to break up that edge and to leave some of the undergreens showing and it creates the illusion of the grasses um, either side. So we just wiggle the brush along, changing the direction so that it's not all in one direction. These grasses tend to have a bit of shape to them, different directions. There we go, bring it around that rock a little bit. So I might now put a little bit more water do some more of that coming towards us from this area so putting some more water into these areas <coughs> and this time I'm going to try and paint it a little bit more wet in wet so just letting the colour run and mix so taking it right up into these grass areas. Plenty of colour. And then I'm going to tip it. So that it starts to bleed. So a little bit more colour here. And I need to break up this edge. Break up this edge. Otherwise, we'll end up with lines on those two sides. <clears throat> A bit more tone. Work some of these grasses right up into the other grasses. go a little bit warmer again so slight bit of red now in this get some of that red in there break that up a bit a bit more red over here can go redder still I think just to get a bit of Change of colour. Um, might just tip that a little bit, get it moving. Spray the bottom out. Just blot off these large, excessive areas of moisture before I tip it.
just get it oh, tipped a little bit get those colors to mix a bit more okay Okay, now <coughs> I'm going to darken up my trees now in these, those distant trees. So I'm going to put some more green with my <coughs> little bit of viridian in those orangey colours that I've just used down here to make a, a slightly muted, a muted green. And then I want these to come darker back here just to show up the side of the building more and also to help the um, you know the little bits of detail that we got over this side make that darker gonna darken up some more in here come a bit darker in my tones in this tree Again, trying to keep the brushwork fairly abstract. Leaving little gaps and holes of the undercolour showing through. Breaking down a little bit into my grasses. There we go, a little bit more in here. Wiggle that way, it's way up the pick up the um, tree a little bit. Now this tree is a lot darker, so I'm going to darken this one up even more. So it's really dark now. There we go. So this tree can come pretty dark, and I'll wiggle this down, leaving again some of the. Um, little bits of undercolour showing through. So I'll bring that all the way down. Down into these grasses. There we go. And then I may even also lift that out because we don't want to run ideally all right now I'm gonna put some some um, bluier shadows across the building. So I'm going to mix up my ultramarine again. And into that just put a little, little bit of the, um, the uh, dark colour that I just used in the tree. So across this area now I want to get a bit of shadow from this tree on the roof so I'm going to just mottle some of this shadow across the front of the building um, and make it feel like there's some of that dappled dappled light kind of uh, breaking across the, uh, the surface. So a little bit there, just a little bit there. Some of that into these orangey colours. It'll be very dappled probably in here because it's right nearer the tree. And then we'll have some of that dappled light against the woodwork 
particularly on this end end piece. Darken up there as well because that's been quite dry. Just make that end gable a bit darker. A bit darker in here. In places. There we go. Come a bit darker under here. And even put a little bit of that dappled light across the banister itself. Perhaps a little bit more over this way. Where we leave the edge of the um, of the building. Okay. Too strong there. Too much variation. And um, may even go slightly dark again. Almost, almost black, but not quite. Just to get a few more stronger marks under the railing into some of the shapes. And it's not quite dry yet, but it's it will bleed a little bit. This will it's more just to um, add another layer of information that resembles um, detail without actually painting the detail. Leave that bit too white there. <clears throat> More little vertical bits coming across into here, a bit more dark in the windows, at the end there, we'll have the odd, um, I don't know, like power line or something perhaps, so again with my rigger, I'm just going to bring a few little lines here and there, because this always um, helps to sort of link areas together more than anything. Perhaps there's something going on there. There's a little bit, I don't know, maybe a bit of something sticking down there. A few more little dark squiggly marks. Perhaps one of these little chaps is wearing a very dark top. Make my figure nice and dark in there. A few little bits and pieces just in here. Maybe there's a, another bit of something hanging down there. Okay. Not so keen on the way that that's gone in, so I'm just going to block that off a bit. Just soften that down. It's a bit too harsh. Just knock those shadows down a bit. Not them too strong. And then finally I think I need to put a teensy bit more shadow in this cable. So taking my shadow colour, the blues, a bit more water. Just going to wash over if it's dry enough. The 
this end of the building, go over the window, coming down, because we've got shadow pushing through there, comes all the way down to the banister, through the window, through the window on this side, there's just a little bit of light popping its head through through there. We'll leave that unpainted. I can put a teensy bit of that shadow across the banister. There and there. To link that together. We can have a little bit more shadow on this banister. To knock it down a little bit, not quite so so bright. Just in places, take that down. And then finally, I might just use some Nika color. So I'm going to dip straight into some neat orange. And then just within my wash here, I'm just going to put a few little spits and spots, which might bleed a bit. Just to indicate, I don't know, like some flowers or something brighter growing there. Perhaps a little bit more orange here. almost use this as a, a lead into the picture particularly if I take some take some red and then back here somewhere we have just a, a darker bit of red within our shadowy colors a little bit of red there perhaps touch here along there just to break it up a bit, make it a bit more interesting. And then we'll have some yellows. And these will be like a lemony, quite a strong lemony yellow. Oops, try and keep it clean. Just trying to clean it out of my palette, it's a bit dirty. So some stronger, stronger yellow. We'll have some little bits of this up in the foliage here and there. We'll have a few little spots growing in our grasses. There and there. Might give some of those just a little little blast. Just to get them moving a little bit. <clears throat> Finally. And finally, I'm just going to take a few little spots of white and just touch a few of these in the foreground. So I'm just using um, white acrylic here, but you could use gouache or um, 
white watercolour, anything that will give you the coverage really. There's some little white bits there. We'll have some little whiter spots just over the with the orange some of the oranges here. Kind of flowers mixed together. Uh, we may have a little bit like no some little white spots just in these shadowy areas. And then the last thing is I just need to put some colour on the figure's faces. And for that I'm going to use some crimson and some ochre. Just to make up sort of a orangey pink. They are in the um, in the shadow. I don't want them to be too light, so I'm just going to pop this little chap up there. Might be a bit too red. Go a little bit more ochre. -y. A bit more ochre. There we go. One there, and we'll bleed that one into his top. Yeah. Maybe we'll add another couple of little, I don't know, redder. Perhaps there's some people out on the veranda. Can't really see them very well, but just a few little figures. Okay. And I think that'll do us.